Good morning, everyone, and welcome to It's a New Day and this particular segment called All In. My name is Art Cardos, and I'm excited to be here talking to you today about what I call the power of God being turned up so that you and I, to full power, so that you and I can enjoy the glory that he has planned for us. And if you'd like to call in, this is a live call-in program. You can call in at 1-877-667-1180. If you're someone that has to go out and travel in your car and you would like to uh, uh, follow us, you know, keep us on, you can text in the words all in to 72727. That's the number, 72727. And that's thanks to our mobile marketing. Thank you, Rick, for making that available for anyone who wants to listen in as they're driving around. So we've been talking over the past few weeks about the power of God. Now, first of all, I want to talk to you about the fact that I am not a minister. I am not a preacher. I am not building a church. I am not interested in anyone uh, saying to themselves, you know, he's just trying to get us in to go somewhere. I, I, I am not doing that. I'm a businessman, and I utilize principles in my world, in my life, in my business, so God Almighty can intervene on my behalf. And I have you know, been working on this for a long time with the Word of God, you know, and the Word of God is final authority, absolutely final authority in our lives. So when it comes to the Word of God, and it comes to your business or your personal life, what is it that is your stumbling block? I guess that's the question today. What's your limit? What's the limit that you can believe for? What limits have you placed on yourself? For instance, if someone says to you, would you believe that today your financial life is going to change and you'll never have to think about money again? You go, well, well, I don't know if I could believe that. I don't know if that's God's will for my life. What if someone said to you, you know, those sicknesses that were on you for the last year are all going to disappear today? Would you believe that? Or would you choose to say to yourself, well, you know, uh, we have to see how God's going to do this. We place limits on the Lord. The Lord has no limits. Remember that. God isn't broke busted, sick, and disgusted. He is the source of all of our strength, the source of all of our power, and uh, he is the Lord, you know? And we often say, you know, he's the Lord of lords, the King of kings. Well, did you know that you are called Lord in the Bible? And you are a Lord. He's the Lord of you. He's the Lord of lords, the King of kings. But are you living up to your expectations? That's the question. I want to read you something here to start out with from the book of Joshua. And it's uh, chapter 18. And I'm just going to read the first paragraph or so here. It says, Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. But there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. They have not yet received their inheritance. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go? and possess the land which the Lord your God of your fathers has given you. What do you think's going on there? God had given them the land, and they still didn't believe it. They still didn't take their inheritance. They were living as if they didn't have it. And, I mean, Joshua got upset with them. He said, how long are you going to take? What's it going to take to wake you people up? What's it going to take before you go take the land that your God has given you? Seven tribes were sitting on their hands, waiting, waiting, waiting. What were they waiting for? God had gone before them and subdued the land. Well, today the message is God has gone before you and subdued the land. 
What are we waiting for? Why do we say we're waiting when God sent his only son into the earth, paid the ultimate price on the cross, shed every ounce of blood, and then we read, we read in the Bible the last two weeks, and I can go back and read it again, where God through declared to Jesus all things. At the cross, Jesus was received all things. And he declared it to us. He declared it to us. So all things were declared to Jesus, and it, and he, through the Holy Spirit, declares it to us. So the question is, when are we going to receive it? When are we going to receive our inheritance? What is our inheritance? Our inheritance is to be prospering in all that we do. Do you know that you are a child of God? That you know that Jesus was the firstborn, the firstborn man to be born again into the earth, and that you and I have a number? I don't know what number you are, but I, I mean, we all have a number second born, third born, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, hundredth, ten thousandth. Everyone who accepts the Lord as their Lord and Savior has a number, you know? You you are one of the ones who are reborn. So, our inheritance. Jesus came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. If you're a businessman, I want to challenge you today. If you're not and you're just someone at home who I don't want to use the word just because that's a if you're home, you're doing something and you're probably doing something very important. But if you're someone who needs something that you don't have, maybe it's your health, maybe it's finances, maybe it's a, uh, your family needs prayer. I don't care what it is. I'm going to ask you today and challenge you today to join me. Let me join you and agree with you that God already has given you your inheritance. You have to take it. You have to take it. So what is the word take? I mean, what do you mean take it, Art? How do we take something? You know, one of the things that the word declare means, and Jesus said he declared all things to us. That's a, that's a, a declaration. A declaration isn't a suggestion. When we had the declaration of this country, the decla dec declaration of independence, the, we have a document that declared freedom. And it declared it for this country. That's what you and I need to do. Declare our inheritance that we have been given through Jesus, through Christ. So if it's your business, we want to talk about how to double it or triple it or quadruple your business. Do you know that God wants to magnify you in the earth? Now, if you don't feel worthy of that, let me tell you this. Look around you and notice the people that need help because I am sure that God has placed before you situations where you could assist them if you had enough finances or enough spiritual strength or enough of anything going on inside of you. In other words, if you don't have strength in you, you can't share that strength with someone else. So I'm telling you and I, that the way to be selfish, and I mean selfish, is not to take the Word of God and let it magnify in us, because there's so many people around us who need to see that. They need a demonstration. So if you feel you've arrived and you don't need a miracle in your life, I'm going to suggest to you that you're not looking around you to see who you can help. You know, it's, it's time for us all to start helping all those around us. Love our neighbor as ourself, those that God has placed before us. So this is the day the Lord has made. And today, we're talking about prosperity. We're talking about the fact that God's word at work in the earth is here to guarantee us that we could have prosperity. And I'm going to tell you that this particular year, especially, God has turned up the volume control in a way. You know, I, I was talking about, you know, we all know what light speed is, or we speed of light. 
or if you go see Star Trek, or if you go see any of the, the, the good movies that are out there that have to do with science fiction, they'll talk about light speed. Let's get it up to light speed. Okay, what about glory speed? The glory of God. What the heck is the glory of God? It is the absolute essence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe, who spoke all things into existence. Do you think that glory is here for us? That's part of your inheritance. Our inheritance is to take what God has already declared. And the key word here that I'm I'm dwelling on today is declared. He declared it. He's not going to, he doesn't need to declare it again. You don't need to wait to see if he wants you healed. You don't need to wait to see if he wants you prosperous. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be healed. As a parent, you want that for your children. You would never expect wrong things for them. And I think we're going to be going to break here, according to my time. So what? before we go, I want to challenge you. If you're someone, I want to pray with you, or I want to agree with you. And you can email us, and I'll tell you more about that after the break. Stay with us. We're talking about how you can increase your business, your life, and see God demonstrate in your life today. I mean today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you're listening. Call in. We'd like to talk to you about how we can help you to double and triple God's plans in your life this day. Amen. At MFB Wealth Management, we won't use fear just to sell you something. But we will encourage you each step of the way. We won't confuse you with technical terms. But we will provide you with biblically-based financial advice that you can understand. We won't ignore you when trials come your way. We will be there for you emotionally and spiritually through all the ups and downs of life. Hi, I'm Doug Floro, President and Certified Financial Planner of MFB Wealth Management. If you are in need of financial planning for the first time or looking for an advisor who will give you more personal attention, I invite you to visit our website at mfbwm.com to learn more about us. Our website again is mfbwm.com. You can click the Contact Us page to start the conversation. MFB Wealth Management. That's my father's business, Wealth Management. Securities and advisory services offered through Genios Wealth Management, member FINRA, SIPC. What would an extra $250 a month mean to you? For some, it's a little financial breathing room. For others, it's a car payment, a home repair, or help with college tuition. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, president of Quicken Loans, and I've got some great news if you're looking to save money on your mortgage. All it takes is a simple phone call to Quicken Loans at 800-QUICKEN to see if you qualify for the government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. Folks who refinance with HARP can save an average of $250 a month. That's $3,000 a year. Our home loan experts fully understand the HARP guidelines, and they'll walk you through our streamlined process. And for six years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. And for the second year in a row, they've also ranked us highest in mortgage servicing. Call 800-QUICKEN or visit quickenloans.com. Visit jdpower.com for award information. Call for cost information and conditions. Equalizing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. Good morning and welcome back to All In. My name is Art Cardos and uh, I am excited to be talking to you today. If you'd like to call in to talk with All In, uh, it is 1-877-667-1180. And we'd love to take your calls and discuss how God can turn things around today for real, no joke, in your life today. Uh, I want to talk to you about a process because we're talking about how the Lord wants you to change. You have to change what you're doing. If you don't change what you're doing, you're going to be right where you are a year from now. And I don't want you to miss the blessing that's on this land. I want to read you something here from Psalm 109. And this is Psalm 109. I'm going to read from verse 17 uh, to about 20 or so here. And it says, As he loved cursing, so let it come to him. 
as he did not delight in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, as with a garment, so let it enter his body like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be to him like the garment which covers him, and for a belt with, uh, which girds himself continually. Let this be the Lord's reward to my accusers. Wow. Think about that. So if cursing and if speaking, speaking against people, okay, and being uh, talking about the negative or the curse in your life causes all that to come on you, what do you think talking about the blessing does? See, what we talk about all day long, every day, we speak life or death into our lives. And I know that we all have those moments where nobody uh, is thinking about it. You're just kind of talking and you're just kind of speaking and it just comes out of your mouth. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what we put into our heart comes out of our mouth. And that comes out in the worst times. It comes out when things aren't going right. Now, I don't know if you're someone that has everything go right every day. I know that in my world, things don't always go exactly the way I plan. Matter of fact, that's the exciting time of life when you wake up and things didn't go the way you expected them to. You have two choices. You can curse it or you can bless it. What does that mean? That means out of your mouth, you can say, this kind of stuff always happens to me. Or you could say, boy, you know, I always get sick this time of the year. Or boy, I hope I don't die from this one. Or blah, blah, blah. You curse yourself over and over again. And what Psalm 109 says, and read it from yourself from verse 17, what you put out as a curse, what you speak is let it be done unto you. So, I'm challenging you to change your vocabulary today. What is that going to change to? That something great is going to happen today. That this is truly the day God wants to prosper me. That God loves you so much that he sent Jesus into the earth just for you. Just for you. And he would do it again because he wants you to be a part of his kingdom. You are a part of his kingdom. Um, listen to this in Mark. Now we jumped over to Mark, the book of Mark, and we're in ver uh, chapter 11, and we're reading verse 23. This is the red print, so you know what that means. Jesus is talking. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Now, this isn't name it and claim it, but Bo, let me tell you something. This is Jesus, the anointed one, speaking about a process that works every single time. What are you doing in your life? Are you speaking words that are faith-filled or fear-filled? And words are containers. They contain the seed of what we believe. I'm going to read that again from Mark 4.11. For assuredly, Jesus is saying, I say to you, for assuredly, this is for absolutely, this is what I'm saying to you. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea. And don't doubt in your heart, but believes that these things he says will come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. He shall have whatever he says. Now, we just read from the Old Testament where if they spoke curses, the curse came upon them as a garment. It was just like a garment that they wore. The curse comes on you when you speak it. What is a curse? It's anything apart from the blessing of God. The Bible says 
that anything apart from faith does not please God. Matter of fact, it calls it sin. Well, calling things that are not as though they are. If you're someone who's sick right now, you have an ailment, and you've been this thing has been bothering you for, for months, maybe years, how about today you start declaring that you are set free, totally healthy? Now, but here's the thing. From the moment you say it, I want you to believe it. But Art, you don't understand. I've tried this stuff before. Blah, 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 blah. I don't really care what you've tried. I'm telling you God's word is final authority, and you have to make it final authority if you want it to work in your life. So this day is the day that God wants you to be totally transformed. So if you have something that's been plaguing you, speak to it and declare yourself healed today. Shout it to the walls. Declare it out loud. Write down the date, the time, and the hour. And now here's the thing. Don't ever refer to yourself as having that again after you prayed that prayer. Someone says to you, how are you feeling? Shut your mouth and say, I am receiving my healing. It is on the way. It is already taking place. Do you think you could discipline your tongue to do that? The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. How many times do we hear that, but yet we don't apply that? So whether it's for a healing or you need to receive a home, how about your home paid off supernaturally this year? Could you believe that? Oh, Art, I don't know. I owe like 15 years. Really? Is that too big for God? Let's see. Let's put some limits on God. Let's see. Because you live in a particular state, maybe Pennsylvania, right? That definitely limits you. And then if you live in a smaller town but where, where people don't all go to church, maybe that limits you even more. Or is that the kind of limits you're putting on God? Or should we be saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? And I'm speaking to the mountain. Home. I decree, I declare you supernaturally, supernaturally paid off. Art, you're asking, you're, you're talking crazy, man. This is nuts. Really? Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Because you've tried everything else. And look where it gets us. God doesn't even want us in debt. He wants us to be debt-free. Why aren't we talking like a debt-free people? He's put, he subdued the land. And he's not, and we've not taken our inheritance. Our inheritance is staying right there. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for all of us. We have to decree it, declare it, and receive it by faith in Jesus' name. We're going to break. We'll be back right after these messages. Radio. I'm Chris Foster. Could be tough getting around most of the mid-Atlantic with a big snowstorm on the way starting tomorrow. We are expecting upwards of 20 inches of snow, maybe up to two feet of snow. Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is expected to be very windy as well, with flooding possible along some coasts. 
Today, there's a threat for tornadoes across the central Gulf Coast. An hour from the opening bell on Wall Street, we'll see what happens today. Two factors driving down markets, slumping oil prices and a slower Chinese economy. The Dow Jones Industrial Average tinked in early trading yesterday, but markets partially recovered in a late rally before the closing bell. The Dow finished down about 250 points. Oil prices could continue to drop as Iran prepares to sell its supplies for the first time since sanctions were lifted. Foxes. Jackie Ibanez in New York. Fox News, we report, you decide. Coming up this week on The Money Pit, below-grade bathrooms add convenience and increase home value in theory. But can this addition really pay off? The key is in the planning. Learn what you need to consider on the next Money Pit radio show this Sunday at 1 p.m. on 1180 WFYL. Retrofoam is making homes in southeastern PA more comfortable with energy savings of 30 to 50 percent. Retrofoam is a biodegradable closed cell foam insulation that is injected into existing walls. As long as there is a cavity to hold the insulation, Retrofoam can be installed behind siding, through brick, block, and in stucco. Check us out at Retrofoam.com. Call 215-513-1276. 215-513-1276. Learn more about Retrofoam at Retrofoam.com. Chances are there'll never be an emergency ever again. But just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. Who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Well, this is great. (laughs) I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. History was made on today's date. Stay tuned for an American Minute with Bill Federer. He produced epic films in Hollywood for almost five decades and started Paramount Pictures. His name was Cecil B. DeMille, and he died this day, January 21st, 1959. His best-known films include Samson and Delilah, The Ten Commandments, and The Greatest Show on Earth, for which he won an Academy Award. At the opening of The Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeMille stated, Man has made 32 million laws since the commandments were handed down to Moses on Mount Sinai, but he has never improved on God's law. They are the charter of human liberty, for there can be no liberty without the law. This has been an American Minute with Bill Federer. For a free transcript, call American Minute at 1-888-USA-WORD. Ronald Reagan once said, I have wondered at times about what the Ten Commandments would have looked like if Moses had run them through the U.S. Congress. Good morning and welcome back. We are talking about applying faith to our business, our home, our life, and every aspect of who we are. My name is Art Cardos. I'm a local businessman and I care about using faith to move forward with business in every area. And uh, one of the things that uh, I'd like to encourage you to do is call in if you want to and have a discussion about how we can help you and agree with you and faith on your business. The number here is 1-877-667-1180. And we're looking forward to talking with you if you would like to talk about how we can change the outcome. If you're someone who was wondering how they were going to pay your bills for the rest of the month, uh, wonder no more because God's Word provides for that. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to not only pay all the bills. He wants to help supply what you need for that. I want to introduce a new word to you today. And uh, actually, it's a phrase. How about supernatural acceleration of abundance and harvest? What the heck is he talking about? Supernatural acceleration of abundance and harvest. Now, we live in a time where everywhere we look, sin abounds. I mean, it's not very difficult to see that that things are happening out of control all over the world. 
They're happening out of control, you know, locally. You never know what to expect or where to see it. Uh, what you, know, you never know what's going to come up next. But today we wanna, we're talking about taking the limits off and expecting God's power to transform everything, to transform it. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I just want to encourage everyone listening, whatever your circumstance is, whatever the situation is, the power of God can change it today. Not next week, not next year, not in the, when you get to heaven. I'm talking about today. So today, what is it that you need from the Lord? And how will you get it? Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Supernatural acceleration of abundance and harvest is what God wants you to have today. Take the limits off. So what are your limits? How about supernatural debt cancellation? Have you ever had a situation where you were going to pay a bill that you knew you owed and found out? that they have no record of it. It just disappeared, vanished. God did something. Well, you could say, well, I was lucky. I don't like that word luck, by the way. It's short for Lucifer. And uh, we don't use that very often in our lives. But the word blessed fits that kind of category. Okay? Blessing. Blessing. You were blessed. Uh, There are times in our lives where God reaches in and supernaturally blesses you. Well, take the limits off, and if you could take your limits off today, what would you ask God for? Now, I'm not making him a genie in a lamp. I'm not saying you're going to rub the lamp, and I'm not saying it's a drive through either where you pull up to the window and order, and two seconds later, you got your meal. I'm talking about taking God's Word and applying it to circumstances in your life for supernatural acceleration of abundance and harvest. And so in this day, when all sin is happening all over the world, for those who live by faith. Now, you can be a Christian and still not use faith. Did you know that, by the way? You could have accepted the Lord, and then you might be just sitting there on your hands, not applying faith to your daily life, so God can't really officially bless you. I want to read you something here uh, from Jesus talking, and it's in the uh, book of John, chapter 10. This is red print, so Jesus is talking. Most assuredly, I say to you that he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. Okay, do you know the voice of Jesus? Do you know the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you inside of you? Or are you confusing it with strangers? Every day we are bombarded by media, by people, all who have great opinions about life. And my whole thing about opinions is um, everybody's got a couple, like armpits, and usually they stink. So we want to take God's word and make it final authority. If he is the shepherd and there's only one way he could be that shepherd, we have to listen to him, not to the world. The world tells us many things and pushes us in many directions. However, God's word, I I read it to you earlier, whatever we speak, whatever we speak is going to come to pass. That is how it works. So, are you ever saying, I declare supernatural debt (laughs) cancellation? I don't I don't think you're probably walking around today saying that yet, but I'm going to challenge you to change your vocabulary. I'm going to challenge you to think about a wealth transfer, 
I believe another word needs to be added to our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for the healing immediately today. Wow. By adding one word, like immediately, what does that do? And, you know, the word, when we say we're praying for something or we're receiving something, uh, you know, really what we're doing is taking it. We're taking it to believe it for ourselves. It's always been in God's word. But unless you receive that word and place it in your spirit and take it as real, take it as real, take it as a real deal. And if you don't take it as real, it's not real for you. And that's why a lot of people will say the words. It happens often. Well, you know, I tried that name it and claim it thing. It didn't work for me. Well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about taking God's word and declaring it just like the Declaration of Independence was declared, the freedom from England, the freedom in this country, the Declaration of Independence to declare, to declare What are you declaring over your life today? What are you speaking in your life today? And if I have anything that I hope I'm bringing across in this message to anyone who's listening anywhere in the world, think about what you're saying and harness the tongue because the tongue, as small as it is, sets on fire the course of hell itself if we let it. So we want to take the limits off. So what limits do we place on ourselves? And what limits have you placed on your business? What limits have you placed on your healing? What limits are you placing on your life and on your children's lives? If we could take off the limits and you say, but I don't know if I'm worthy, if God wants me to to have that kind of thinking. Well, let me tell you, then you have placed the limits on you. God has not because God has said he wants to bring you life and bring it more abundantly. So if you have drawn the limits, if you have placed those limits on yourself, well, that's why you're stuck where you are. So what we want to talk about is how to not be stuck, okay, Um, but to get out from under it. So when you look at your life today, write down the top five things you want to change. Make a list. Number one. I, I need to change my financial picture. I need to change my health. I need to change. And Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, give me the answers, and I will listen. I am listening to the shepherd. I am listening. I am one of his sheep. I am a sheep, and I listen. I listen. I listen. Try listening. It really works. And the Lord will demonstrate his power. He will demonstrate it in a way that you've never seen it before. Now, I truly believe that this year, we're in a year where God has really going to place demonstration at the top of the list. It's, it's all about you demonstrating who you are. You might have been someone who's been taught for years about the Word of God, but you haven't totally gone all in. You haven't applied it all in. So this is the year to be the person who declares, I'm all in, God's word is either final authority or it is not. It's either final authority or it is not. This is the day the Lord has made. We should be rejoicing. I don't care what happened to you this morning. I don't care what circumstance you're up against. You have a choice. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Choose life, not death. Choose life, not death. So if you're someone who wants to turn their business around, The simple process is decide what you want to turn around. How much do you need to receive from the Lord? Pray the prayer. Declare it. And declare that prayer in a way that when you're done, it is done. It is finished. It is complete. It is over. And you from that point on are praising the Lord. And it looks like we're going to a break. And I just want to encourage you that if you would like me to agree with you in prayer, you can email us. And uh, you can find those emails on the website. It's 1180wfyl.com. Go there, and we'll be back. It is a gift from you. The world is turning in its place because you made it too. 
A nation of well-informed men who have been taught to know and prize the rights which God has given them cannot be enslaved. It is in the region of ignorance that tyranny begins. A quote from Benjamin Franklin. Your Family Matters with Carla Dedesi. Your Family Matters brings a biblical perspective to your child rearing. Author and radio personality Carla Dedesi challenges you to think critically about raising your children with a biblical perspective. You will learn techniques for strengthening and protecting your family. Using truth, love, and wisdom, she encourages purposeful parenting to fortify your family. Together, we can and will strengthen our families with things that matter. Carla is a conservative voice who loves God, her family, and America. Follow Carla at CarlaDedesi.com. Hi, this is Carla Tedesi, the host of Your Family Matters. I do hope that you join me every Friday morning at 8 o'clock as we discuss Your Family Matters, right here at 1180 WFYL. The Apostle Paul told the Thessalonians in chapter 2 not to be troubled or shaken in their heart or spirit. He said not to falter in their faith or their understanding of Christ, either by what they read or heard, because the day of Christ was at hand. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr, president of the American Pastors Network. The Apostle Paul warned the early believers not to be deceived by the overwhelming deception and to expect a falling away from the truth. He said there would be great wickedness and great iniquity and the great wicked one. Paul said, therefore, to stand fast and hold tight to the truth they had been taught. If this was a reality and a necessity in Paul's day, how much more today? He went on to say, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. I'm Sam Rohr of the American Pastors Network saying, Let us also not be deceived in our current days of evil, when we also see a falling away. If there was ever a time for true believers to stand fast for the truth, it is now. Join the Pennsylvania Pastors Network at papastors.net. Kings or Parliament could not give the rights essential to happiness. We claim them from a higher source, from the King of Kings and Lord of all the earth. They are not annexed to us by parchments and seals. They are created in us by the decrees of providence which establish the law of our nature. They are born with us, exist with us, and cannot be taken from us by any human power without taking our lives. A quote from John Dickinson, 1804. This week on the Lions Den University Report, it's an acoustics professor at Penn State, Dan Russell. I think I've been able to to, uh, demonstrate that I'm someone that can be trusted even though I believe differently than they do. And I'm not going to condemn them for what they believe, but I'll challenge them that this is what I believe and what you're thinking is really wrong, and here's why. That's next time on the Lions Den University Report. Talking about being all in. You know, there's a difference in just being in and being all in. If you are uh, just in, okay, you can get by and you're guaranteed that you will, you know, uh, at some point, you know, meet the Lord and be in heaven with him. But we're talking about being all in. And if you'd like to call in and, and discuss that a little bit in this last segment, the number here is 1-877-667-1180. If not, I'm just going to continue to talk about being all in because I I just get excited about being all in. And if you'd like to come along with us, that would be great. But I'm really excited about helping people in business to realize that God wants them to prosper. He wants you to prosper today. And if you're your, your business flow is slowed up a little or isn't doing exactly what you want, there are reasons for that, and God wants to turn that around today. Let me give you some words here that could help when you're praying. You know, when you pray, you know, if we, we believe that we receive this now, immediately, in Jesus' name. When is the last time someone prayed, I believe I receive it now, right now. And yet if we go and we, re- we go to the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
What kind of faith? Well, I don't know. Now faith is the substance of things. What kind of faith? Now faith. And what I have learned is that if the faith isn't now, if it isn't urgent, I know we, we talk about always seems like God shows up at the last minute. Why is that? Because that's when the urgency arose. And it's in that urgency that victory materializes. It's something about the human nature that says, I need it now. And so we receive it now. So we believe we receive now, immediately in Jesus' name. We claim a hundredfold return right now. Are you a tither? Are you a giver? We claim a hundredfold return now. Now. Well, do we have a right to do that? Yes, we do. Because Jesus is, we are in Jesus, and Jesus went to the Father, and we are in him, and all things are declared to him. You have to take your place. You have to know who you are in Christ. You have to. We claim a hundredfold return right now. Do you do that? Satan, take your hands off of our harvest right now. Are you a giver? Have you tithed? Are you a giver? Do you give as the people that come to you and situations arise and the Lord says, I want you to sow seed there? Do you do that? And you tell Satan to take his hands off of your harvest because you have given. The Bible says in Malachi 3.10 that when you tithe, God rebukes the devourer for your sake. But if you aren't a consistent tither, you have to rebuke the devourer yourself. So if you want an automatic rebuke of the devourer, be a tither. But if not, you tell Satan to take his hands off your harvest. You tell him now. You want immediate results. You demand it. Why? Are you demanding it of God? No. You're demanding it because God has already declared it done. He declared it. And we do not of our own, okay, have the right to tell God to undeclare it. He declared it. He's given you your inheritance, but you have not taken your inheritance. So we're looking this year for super prosperity, super abundance, super harvest, and we're looking for it in Jesus' name. Our capacity for a new realm of super prosperity is enlarging every day, every day, in every way, by the grace of God. We are to take the limits off. What are your limits? What's holding you back? What is keeping you from believing you can have whatever you, the Lord told you to want? What is it that you've prayed or looking for? Was if it's health, wealth, eternal life? Eternal life, all you need to do is accept Jesus, pray the prayer out loud, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and, uh, and away you go. You know, and uh, I think that we have a caller on the line here. And uh, and so uh, if we can put Joe through. Hello, Joe. Are you there? Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you this morning? Splendid. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Well, I heard you talk about choice. and uh, Isn't that an interesting word? Well, it's it's it, the the name of one of my my programs that I deliver is success is a choice, joy is a choice. It really Having is. Having a great twenty sixteen is a choice. Yeah, amen. You know, some people when you say that they get upset with you. Did you ever notice that? Like as if because they're they're like they think they're stuck not being joyful or or not like they can't make a choice, so they get a little upset because they're you're insinuating they made the wrong choice, right? Or that, or that they, yeah, that they did something wrong. Or they did something wrong, right? Yeah. So if things so, aren't going right, what do we do? We just decide that we're going to do what it takes to make them better. Right, and we make a, a different choice because choices all lead somewhere, and and so when we take God's word and apply it to a wrong choice, God can turn it around. What do you think? Well, I, I just had this conversation with a, a young lady the other day, and uh, you know, I was we were talking about finding joy. You know, she was she was seeking happiness, and we talked about finding joy. And the difference is, when you're finding joy, 
you are acknowledging that joy exists and it's just there for you to discover. Right. When you're seeking something, there's not positive proof that it exists or not. So in having this conversation, I said, you walk through the, the living room and you stub your toe. You can either be angry for stubbing your toe or thankful that you didn't fall and break your ankle. Very good. That's your choice. That is absolutely your choice. How you look at the world around you and what happens is your choice. And you can see it from a perspective of gratitude and joy, or you can see the worst. Well, and it sounds to me like uh, you have a good handle on this because a lot of people will blame God, won't they? And, and then they'll continue to curse the rest of the day, and then they wonder why they're not blessed. And, yeah. Go ahead. And Well, even if they don't blame God, they're not in the mindset that it's all out there for them to grab. It's all you there. Know, this is going to happen to me. I don't have a say in my future. Okay. You know, and the opposite is gratitude for what is and confidence that of what will be. Yep. Well, Joe, we do have another caller i got to take real quick because the show's just about okay. over. But uh, thank you for calling in. I'd let, call back. I'd like, we, should, we should have more discussions about joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Absolutely. All have right. Thank you, day. Joe. Bye. Now we have another caller. Uh, and uh, we can put that caller through. Hello there. How are you? Good morning, Art. This is Clay Smith. How are you? Clay Smith, how are you? We don't have a lot of time, Clay. You waited till the end of the show. But yeah, are you going to be at Believers in Business tomorrow? I am indeed. Coming down to Quaker Town to enjoy the show, yep. Believers yeah. in Business. Believers in Business. Getting together to agree and pray. How, is there any other reason you called in? Just say a great show. Made me think a little bit. I always worry I ask for too much when I pray. I don't think you can ask for more than the universe and God owns it all. So I don't think we need more than that. We're out of time, but thank you for the call. Look forward to seeing you at Believers in Business, and that's in Quakertown tomorrow. If anyone would like to join us there, we'd love to see you. Thanks for being with us on the program. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Joe. And we'll see you next week. Start believing for supernatural increase. Art Cardo saying, believe. All things are possible for those who believe. Oh